Hello, my name is Ellery, and no, this video title is not a lie. I play a lot of Sonya, and I mean a lot. If I think there's any chance that I could win a match while playing Sonya, I'm pretty much going to pick her. Now, I mostly stay to Fog, and even there I lose more matches than I win. Uh, recently I had the idea to venture outside of my comfort zone and into Standard, and... For some stupid reason, I decided to pick Sonya in my first match. Well, let's see how that worked out for me. My opponent today is Sheltered Kid. His rating was around like 850. My rating is like around 850. So I'm not a very good player. I don't claim to be. I'm mostly just here to have fun. The COs today are Adder and Sonya. So Sonya is really, really bad. Uh, she gets plus one vision in Fog of War, which I do find to be pretty useful. Although over time, I think I became more dependent on it. It's hard for me to play without that extra vision now. Her counterattacks deal extra damage. This almost never matters because if you've been hit first, when you strike back, you're not really doing that much damage. And she has bad luck. So imagine if you were playing Flak, but you couldn't high roll, you could only low roll. Yeah, that's how bad Sonya is. I don't know why she has to be this bad. If they removed her bad luck, she'd still be one of the worst COs. Adder does not have any day-to-day -day power, which is great for me. Typically, it's very, very difficult for me to, to win against COs who have strong day-to-day -day powers, or COs who have very strong superpowers, which is almost everybody except for Sonya. So this is why I lose almost all of my matches. In any case, Adder is somebody that I can actually fight against because he doesn't have a huge advantage over me day to day other than my bad luck. And his power gives him plus one movement and his superpower gives him plus two movement. These are very effective and in fact it's for this reason that you see Adder played so much in the lower tiers, but I can play around those. So Adder is a CO that I thought I could defeat with Sonya and my opponent's rating was not astronomically high. It was my first match in Standard, I decided to just see how it goes. And uh, this is pretty much how it goes. He starts off by moving this way and building infantry. Nothing groundbreaking here. Now in my case, I want to talk about what I did at first because I thought about these moves ahead of time. Uh, for this infantry, I wanted to move it over here into the corner because I felt like this property here was never going to be contested. And if I got a unit up here, I could have them move around the outside edge of the map over time, starting from it basically as soon as possible. For the other infantry, I think I think everyone pretty much figured this out. I didn't figure this out on my own, but I wanted to go this way so that I could move over here and start capturing all of these properties because there's very few chains on this map, but there is a chain from here to here to here to here so once you get into this corner you start capturing so basically my goal was to move into the corners and just start building up my economy and not worry that much about the rest of the map until later i also am going to ignore the comm tower until i absolutely think that i need it and you're going to see later on how this pays off <clears throat> i build more infantry so for my opponent he starts moving similarly to how I'm moving, at least at the start. I don't know if he copied my moves or if he came up with that idea on his own. It's really hard to tell sometimes. Here, I finally start moving into the center, and once again, I don't think this property is ever going to be contested, so I'm going to go for this one first. One of my goals is to get this property and this property, and do my best to prevent my opponent from getting this property and this property. If I can do that, I can get an income advantage, um, unfortunately, you're going to see my plan didn't work out for me too well, for kind of unrelated reasons. The next thing I did was built a recon, and that had to do with the plan that I just mentioned before. What I wanted to do was get this re- I counted my spaces, and I saw that I could get my recon down here within like two turns to block this property and this property. So I'm going to try to do that as soon as possible. This recon actually ended up being very helpful during the match. So my, here's here's my opponent's first mistake, I believe. Anyway, I think my opponent made three major mistakes this match, and I believe this was the first one. 
He went for the comm tower right away instead of focusing on economy. He doesn't need this comm tower yet. He's not going to need it for a long time. And this infantry could be like going somewhere else and helping to secure the center, basically. And it's for that reason I was able to keep him out of the center for so long. The next thing my opponent did was he decided to go for this property instead of this one. Whereas, like I said, I was going for this property instead of this one over here. That was another divergence in our openings. So, that was my recon's first move. Now, surprisingly, this recon can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It can move on to this city, or it can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or onto this city. So it can block either of these cities on the very next turn. Uh, I love recons. I play a lot of fog, but I immediately recognize that this recon still has value, even in standard, because it can do that. And I was able to block those properties for a couple of turns, as you'll see very soon. So now I'm already securing the center, and then I'm also, I'm basically right here in the same spot that he's at, about to about to capture this property, but I've, I've already got a unit in the center, whereas he is still lagging over here in the corners because of this comm tower and because he chose to go this way first. So he finishes securing those caps and then starts going for that one. Now he is slightly ahead of me, but again, that's a property that's never going to be contested. So I don't know if that was really a big advantage. Okay, so here I was trying to decide which of the properties to block. And I decided to go for this one, the reason being is because there's many shoals behind it, so if I need to retreat, I can pull back more quickly. And also, if I need to get from here to here, I can still reach. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But my opponent is nowhere near this property, while, while he is somewhat near this property. And by moving here, I think I also forced him to build a tank early, just because he needed a response to this recon, otherwise he was never going to get those properties in the middle. Finally, I'm getting closer to this airport. It did take a while to get over there, but that's also why I'm glad I set my unit in that direction first. Now, I think my big mistake in this match is that I only sent one infantry over here, and this guy was over here by himself for a long time, and it took him so much time to get all of this work done. Uh, my opponent, I was able to secure the center, but my opponent ends up being able to keep up with me in income, and he even pulls ahead of me for a short time because it takes me so long to secure this corner over here. I think maybe I should have gotten an APC or a transport copter uh, sooner in the match. I'm not sure. So here comes my opponent. He secures that cap and now he's getting the airport. Now he immediately builds a tank in response to my recon. And uh, you're gonna see what my response is to this tank. I believe I typically moved my recon first because it was the move that I thought about the most. Yeah, so the only thing I needed to do was just pull this unit over here. Now this does open this city up, but now I'm blocking this one and the tank cannot reach me over here, which means I'm setting him back at least 1,000 income by blocking this property right here by one turn. So this recon has already earned 1,000 gold. Next, I'm moving another infantry into the center so I can start capturing this property as soon as possible. You can see I'm getting these soon and he's not getting these anytime soon. Now I saw something interesting. This property right here is kind of up for grabs. If I move this unit over here, because I don't want to I don't want to fight over this property. This is his property. I want to stop him from getting it, but I don't want to try to get it myself. But I realize this property right here is actually up for grabs. If I move this unit over here, then next turn I could reach this. And it would be very difficult for him to get a unit over there fast enough to interrupt me. So I wanted to go for that while I had the opportunity. This unit I put in the corner earlier is now putting in work. And this guy is just now reaching the airport. I really He needed backup. I, had, I, I should have sent another unit over there. Um, I built a tank in response to his tank. I just want to be able to fight it out in the center if I need to. His tanks are going to be slightly stronger than mine. But he's Adder, so he doesn't have a huge advantage over me. It's not like my matches against Jess, Max, and yes, I do play Sonya against the likes of Max, Olaf, and I have occasionally won those matches, surprisingly, but I, I, I lose way more often than I win. <laughs> but against Adder, uh, I can go head-to-head -head against his tanks without much, much issue. And now he's starting to proliferate more tanks. 
Um, I'm not sure why he built it over here because there's not that much action over here. I think maybe just funneling them into the center would have been better. And this was, I, I did say my opponent made three big mistakes. I would say this was a smaller mistake, but I think he should have built a tank here and you're going to see why very soon. So now that this tank is uh, threatening this city, I decide to just push this recon over here. Now I'm threatening to interrupt this cap. And then this tank has to get pulled this way to deal with this recon, or I'm going to be able to slow down his infantry advance. So he has to make a decision. Does he want to send this tank over here for backup, or does he want to send it over here to, um, to push away my recon? Now I'm getting these two properties here, and my tank comes into the middle. Now, uh, let me get through my movement first, because I want to talk about my builds this turn. So what I did was I built my tank in the center here. And the reason is because this tank right here always backs up this tank right here. So if I drag him into the into a fight in the center, I now have a stream of tanks constantly coming in no matter what. I, as long as I keep building tanks here, I can constantly reinforce my tanks to meet his tanks head on. But he has an infantry here, so his tank chain is already broken, which means if we end up fighting in the middle, this tank's not gonna have any backup for at least one turn. And that's why I thought it was a mistake to build this tank over here. So he's already going over to the support, and then he actually sent infantry as backup over here. I failed to do that, and that's why, um, even though I even though I secured the center early on, uh, we ended up having pretty equal income. Now he builds an artillery. Uh, typically, I've heard it said that if you're not good at the game, you should just never build artillery because. Uh, they're very difficult to use properly. Um, we'll see if either me or my opponent was able to use our artillery to good effect. Because yes, we did both build artillery. I think they're a little bit easier to use in standard, just based on my limited experience playing in standard so far. So now he's setting this up tank up here. I think it's because he wants to prevent me from interrupting this. Now I've secured both captures in the middle, and I decided to just interrupt this cap and let his tank come in and hit me. And the reason is because of what I talked about before with this tank chain. My tank is always going to have backup, while this unit over here is way out of position. This unit can't come over here and back up this tank. And I noticed that my recon was actually blocking the way so that he couldn't hit my tank from two angles. And for that reason, what I decided to do with my recon was pull it over here. Now this prevents, because if I left the recon here, he could have hit it with the tank and the infantry and he could have killed it in a single turn. But because I pulled the recon over here, only the infantry can hit it or the tank can hit it. He can't hit it with both units, which means he can never kill this recon. It's always going to be left on one HP. And you can see I just now captured my comm tower, but this is the fighting just started. So my opponent captured this comm tower maybe four or five days ago and it's been doing nothing the entire time. I captured this comm tower just now, and I'm 2,000 ahead of him on income, and we both have 10% attack power as when the fighting starts. So I think my comm tower uh, capture timing was much better than his. Now he has to think about how he wants to respond to this tank because I don't think he I don't think he actually believed that I was going to rush in there. I think he believed that this tank was going to scare away my tank. But I decided to play aggressively, especially because I noticed the previous turn that he built this mech. It's going to take a while for this mech to get into position. It's going to take this artillery a while to get into position. This tank has no immediate backup. He just has no response to whatever I'd like to do in the middle. Look at this. The artillery moves as far forward as it can, and it's still not in position to fire. Now he's building up an infantry wall in the middle to try and counter biometry. He has more infantry in the center than I do, so I do have to think about that. And he's doing a much better job of securing these corners. Now he comes over to hit this recon. And like I said, this recon's always going to survive with 1 HP, which is great for me. The next thing you could say, my counterattack damage came into play. I'm not sure. I think this would have been 4-8 either way. I don't think it would have been 4-9. And I doubt 4-7 was possible. So Sonya counterattack is, is basically useless. So now he, do has, now he does have two tanks at the center. But I have this tank here, and then I'm also going to have backup here. Additionally, he has no backup here. He just built two infantry and a battlecopter. This battlecopter is way out of position. He needs units that can get here into the center to help fight, and he's building units that are not getting into the center to help him fight. And once again, I recognize this, so I'm just going to keep pushing in the center. 
So the first thing I did was I noticed that he, if, if he moved over this mountain, he could get this property. So I put my uh, recon actually on this city. So now if he wants to attack it with his infantry, he can get rid of it, but he won't be able to capture the city right away. And if he wants to hit it with his tank and then hit it with, and then capture it with the infantry, it's going to pull another unit out of the center and open up the center for me. So once again, this recon was just phenomenal for me. It's already done so much work. Um, it's secured at least 2000 income and it's also threatening to pull this tank away. It's actually succeeded at keeping the tank over here at the start, and now it's kind of baiting this tank to pull it away from the center again. So the longer this match goes on, the more that this recon has done for me. Um, I decided to come over here and hit his full health tank. So now we have 8-4 and 8-5. This has evened out um, our tank presence in the center, but I have a tank that's immediately going to be over here in position to back them up, while he has nothing. So I'm actually in a much more advantageous position. And on top of that, I decided to come in and just take a first strike against this tank as well while I was here. I don't know why I did that. I, I don't know if I really needed to. I think it was because I wanted to stop him from being able to hit this tank on two sides with an eight health unit and a five health unit. And now I've got this third tank in here ready to help get into the fight. I build my own battlecopter in response to his. I built a lot of battlecopters. It's because I believe that unit count is very important. I actually was more focused on unit count than income this match. And you're going to see that later. I let myself fall behind on income just so that I could get a higher unit count. And so I'm going to try to build battlecopters as often as I can. On two bases, you have to build battlecopters if you want to keep your unit count high. I accidentally hit autoplay, sorry about that. Uh, all that happened was um, his units were continuing their movements. Okay, so now that he now that he sees this, he's going to come in and he's going to try to weaken this tank as well. And he's going to try to weaken that tank, but look, neither of these tanks are dead. So I still have two tanks that are both, I mean, they're not full health, but they're alive. And he has two weakened tanks. Now he does get a lucky shot with this infantry. I believe it's always a luck roll to finish off a tank with an infantry unit. That was a little unfortunate, but... It's really not the end of the world at all. Now, unfortunately, my plan of having my uh, extra tank come in to reinforce in the center didn't work out for me because he was able to effectively wall with these infantry. And I, I probably should have seen that coming and I could have pulled back. But keep in mind, this fighting that I've done, it's prevented him from getting this property and it's prevented him from getting this property. Whereas in my case, I've already got this property and this property. So I don't know, it might, it might have been worth it. I mean, he's, he's probably lost around 3,000 income already on this, and he's already lost 1,000 income on this. So that's half the price of a tank right there. Not to mention the damage I've done to him in return. Now, I do want to highlight this good play over here, because he has done such a better job of securing this corner, whereas in my case, look at this. I've, got, I've still got nothing over here. Um... Somebody's going to build an anti-air. Yes, it's him. He built an anti-air before I did. Unfortunately, this anti-air is way over here, and I have no intention of sending the battlecopter that way. Now, I am able to pull in my tank and then wipe out his unit, so now our tank presence is pretty much evened out. I do have a... My tank is a little more weakened than his, but I also have a full health tank in the center. Next thing I do is I pull my recon off the city, and then I put my tank onto the city. I thought this was really funny. This tank is damaged, but it can still prevent his infantry from getting on here. Uh, sorry, I hit autoplay again. I don't know how I keep doing that. Um, so yeah, I thought it was really funny. I basically traded the position of this recon and this tank, and also with this recon here, it's stopping this tank from coming up here and finishing off my tank. So. The recon is still doing its job as a one health unit of just blocking him and just being as annoying as possible. And on top of that, he still can't get to the city because there's no way for him to dislodge this tank. So even a three health tank is useful if you put it in the right position. Even a one health recon is useful if you put it in the right position. Next, I'm going to move my artillery into the center. I'm going to try to zone out his artillery if possible. And the other thing that I did was um, I started attacking in here. And I wanted to make it so that if his tank wanted to try and hit me, it would have to fire from a shoal and my artillery would be able to fire on him. Meanwhile, if he wants to advance his artillery, my artillery is already in position to fire on him. So even though he built this early artillery, it didn't do him any good. My artillery still got into position faster. And I got a stronger tank presence in the center than he did.
Next, I'm going to build my anti-air. Now, instead of building my anti-air in the center, I built my anti-air over here in, at the edge. And that's because it's closer to where his battlecopter is. I want to get it over there right away. I made some pretty bad moves with my anti-air, unfortunately. And this right here was one of my big mistakes of the match. I went for this. I think my idea, my thought was that he could interrupt it, but then I was going to pull my infantry back or something. But obviously, he's just going to use the battlecopter and the infantry, and I'm just sacrificing this infantry for nothing. The only thing it really accomplished was keeping his battlecopter away from the center for longer. And I guess it's arguable if that was worth uh, the value of one infantry or not. Especially when I already had anti-air on the way to back uh, to, to zone him out. So he's going to use his first side slip. This side slip, I did like almost nothing. I, I, I'm pretty sure I remember. So he got his artillery into this weird position over in the corner. He starts capturing this city up here. He is going to get that city. So not only is his play on his uh, bottom right corner stronger, but also his play in my top left corner is also stronger. And this really, this is what really kept him in the game for a while because I was, I, 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 my play in the center was much better, but his play in the corners really evened it out and uh, that made the match competitive for a while. He's finally going to get this property on, on this side over here, but I'm still boxing out this property. He actually never gets this property. If you keep an eye on this, he'll never get this property for the entire game. Uh, all thanks to this recon, basically. So I, over the course of, you know, 10 days, 20 days, it earned way more than the, than the, than the cost of however much a recon is. He's going to pull that tank back for repairs because he realizes that there, he can't really punch through over here and there's no reason for him to fight into my artillery. He was smart. He decided to pull back here while he was ahead. Or at least while things were still even. Um, I was kind of stupid. I'm going to go in pretty soon. I'm going to I'm gonna push into the center and I'm going to end up overextending. You're going to see that happen. I think it's either this day or it's happening very soon. But yeah, that side slip accomplished nothing. He didn't gain anything from that. The next thing I'm doing is, I'm uh, since he wiped out this infantry, I'm actually pulling these infantry back into the range of my um, anti-air. And I actually made a really stupid move here. I counted the number of spaces my anti-air could move, and I wanted to set it so that it could guard this infantry or this infantry. Excuse me for a second. And uh, I actually ended up pulling it back further than I was supposed to, and so I left these uh, infantry without any protection. And then he never attacked them anyway. Maybe he wasn't close enough. One, two, three... Four, five, six. Oh, okay, he couldn't actually reach them anyway, but I still remember doing that. I remember counting that I wanted this anti-air to be able to reach here, and then I still moved it back further than I had counted. So I misplayed, but it didn't matter because his battlecopter couldn't reach. Now I'm going to take a page out of his book, and I'm going to start using this battlecopter to help me secure the uh, left corner over here. But unfortunately, there's no way for me to interrupt this cap. He is going to get this, and that's going to um, give him a slight income lead for a little while now. The next thing I'm doing is I'm pulling this recon and this tank back because they can't help. And then I actually sacrificed this infantry to delay this capture right here in the center for a little bit longer. Now this is where I got greedy and I started overextending. I felt like this was more or less a free hit. And I wanted to pick off his infantry and then start building a wall around this tank so that I could move my uh, artillery into position. Because this thing right here can't really fire on my tank, but I can set up uh, my artillery to help guard this tank a little bit. It doesn't work out that well for me. I should have just um, I should have just held my position over here and secured my forces in the center. And I'm gonna, as you can see, I'm still keeping the steady uh, the steady stream of tanks moving into the center the entire time. And because I have seventeen thousand, I can build a battlecopter, a tank, and an infantry every turn. And this is going to build up so much over the course of the match. My unit count ends up being so much higher than his over the course of the match because I'm building battlecopters almost every turn. So he manages to wipe out that infantry, and uh, I believe that gives him the opportunity to hit my tank from two angles of attack, if I remember correctly. Let me see what he does. No, he doesn't do that. Did he not push in? Oh wow, I'm surprised. I thought I got punished that turn, but I guess I didn't. I guess he just ignored the fact that my tank was just kind of hanging there. I mean, I, my artillery would have been able to fire, but if I did that, he could have just pushed in and, and finished off my artillery. So I don't know, I think he probably should have punished me here for, for overextending. I got a little bit lucky. Uh, let me know in the comments if you disagree on that play. I'm kind of curious. Like I said, I'm not the best player in the world, so I can only give you my impressions. 
So I'm going to start attacking here and then I was thinking um, I could go for this for a little bit of economy but if I wipe out this infantry and then I take this property I can actually get more economy because I'll be flipping uh, his property and turning it into my property and that's like a 2,000 income lead instead of just 1,000 for capturing a neutral property. This battle copter I actually am planning to use it over here but I move it into the center first just to kind of bait him because I want him to think that I'm moving my battle copter into the center. Now at this point I realized I was overextending so I decided to pull back and show up my position. I think this was very smart. Uh, I I, <coughs> I had already pushed uh, too far. Uh, this line right here, I generally don't want to fight across this line. I just want to hold this line and, and do my best to stop him from getting these properties and to protect my properties. And you're going to see later on the match he actually ends up overextending past this line and I punish him really badly for that. So these infantry right here, I'm actually trying to consolidate my forces over into the center, but I want to keep this anti-air over here uh, to keep an eye on this battle copter. So I'm kind of foregoing this corner, which he's already gotten, and I want to hope that he doesn't move on these properties anytime soon while trying to move all of my forces into the center and consolidate. So that's my current plan moving into the, to the coming days. I pull back this recon to heal it. I'm not sure if that was a good move because right now I only have 17,000 income. And because I healed this recon, I'm not going to be able to buy a Battlecopter next turn. If I want to get Battlecopter tank and infantry, I'm not going to have the 17,000 next turn. So I think that was a misplay on my part. Now my opponent built a rocket. This was the second big mistake of the match in my opinion. The rocket does get some value, but usually almost every single time I've ever built a rocket in a match, it almost always results in me losing the match. That's something I had to learn the hard way. Rockets just are not very good in Advanced Wars competitive play. I don't know what that was. <laughs> I'm listening to a, uh, a playlist. And I guess it has some a uh, couple vocal tracks on there. By the way, I have a link to the music that I'm listening to in the video description. So if you're interested in this, it's a lo-fi remix of uh, different anime songs. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check it out. Now here, uh, hold on, I want to talk about what I did here with this infantry. Now I could have gone for this property, but I saw that this one was up for grabs, and I decided to grab this one first because it's further away. If I went for this property, it would be harder for me to get this one later, whereas if I get this property here, it's going to be easier for me to pull back and get that one later. That's my that's my logic. And then this tank here, I can pull into this corner to heal it because I have this city here. And then if any fighting breaks out in this corner, I'm going to have a tank over here. It's not doing me much good in the center, but because I have it over here, I can actually use it to help zone out his anti-air later on. Uh, that's my logic anyway. Now I decide to come in and shoot an infantry with my anti-air. I think this is the turn where I really pushed way too hard. Yeah, this was... This was really bad. So last turn I pulled back and I was consolidating my forces and then the very next turn I decided you know what I'm just gonna go all in on the center. I don't know what I was thinking. I really I have no idea what I was thinking. So uh, yeah I'm just <laughs> this was a really bad move. I think I saw that I was like slightly ahead and I decided that I wanted to just do something with no reason or logic behind it. And I do get punished for this pretty much immediately so by the very next day I already knew that I'd made a mistake now this battle copter right here I'm gonna set it over here just to harass these infantry because I want to slow down his advance and stop him from getting up here to these properties right now my fight is gonna be over these properties unfortunately this property in the corner I almost never get it and that's because of th I had this guy over here alone and I decided that getting these properties was more important in the short term and he just never had time to get over here and then another I never had time to send another infantry over there so that did hurt me over the course of the match and in order to back him up I'm just gonna it's just battle copter city over here I'm just gonna do all my battle copters are gonna be over here and then everything in the center is gonna everything else is gonna be in the center fighting over here and this I think this did work out to my favor, to my advantage. I don't know if trying to, if I, I don't know if fitting these battle copters into the center would have really worked that well, because it's, it would be so easy for him to shoot them down with anti-air. But over here, they can do a lot of work slowing down his infantry and helping me secure that corner. And actually, I do want to briefly talk about that. So early on in the match, I won the center, but he won the, he won both corners really. So moving into the late game, the late stage of the match, the second half of the match, my goal was to hold the center and then to take the corners from him. So that's my plan moving forward now is that I want to take the I want to take back these corners while continuing to hold the center. Unfortunately, I got way too greedy in the center and I'm going to get punished hard and it's going to be a lot harder 
it's gonna be a lot harder for me to hold the center than I would than I would have liked. Now look at this rocket, it's still not doing anything. Two turns later, the rocket is still not doing anything. One, two, three, four, five. The only thing it's doing is zoning out these squares, which are already on his side of the, the river where I, I shouldn't even be right now. Now he is unfortunately going to get, because I pulled my units into the center, he saw that this property was open and he's gonna grab that one now. This is where the income advantage starts to flip. And he's going to pull, I think he evens it out, and I think he even pulls ahead slightly for a little while. But this is the point where I decided, I was thinking, I had already overextended here, and I realized, you know what, unit count, especially because he built this rocket, I was like, you know what, unit count is more important than income. I'm going to just focus on keeping my units alive, and uh, taking out his weakened units where I can. And I'm going to focus on building up my unit count, so that's my goal now. Build up unit count, and then move in on these corners and secure these corners. The reason I'm putting this anti over here is because it can help me uh, wipe out these infantry and then I also eventually I have goals of locking down this airport. We'll see if I succeed at that plan. So basically I'm front shifting here. He doesn't realize it yet but I'm actually front shifting from the center over to the right hand side. And that's because I don't want to fight into this rocket so I'm just going to start moving this way. He has no presence over here whatsoever, and I have a lot of fast units that can move over here quickly, while he has this slow artillery and this slow rocket, which is never going to get over there in time. I build another tank in the center, I'm continuing to stream tanks in the center. This turn I decided to go double tanks and no battlecopter, and it's because I realized I already have a tank advantage over him, and I want to press that advantage and just have more tanks than he has. Because uh, I'm Sonya, I'm very weak, I have to have more tanks. So he's threatening to get this property on my side. He's overextending a bit here, especially with a low health infantry. He's not going to get that anytime soon. And the best he can hope to do is kind of use this rocket to lock down that property. But um, yeah, it doesn't work out for him. I'll spoil that now. And these mechs that he built so long ago have still not done a single thing. He built two mechs that he could have built in artillery. He pretty much almost could have built an extra. He could have had another tank in the center and another infantry in the center. He could have just had anything other than these, than these two mechs, which have never done anything in the entire match. Mechs, artillery, rockets, you kind of don't really want to build these, especially if you're a um, lower level player. Unless you really have a specific purpose in mind for them, you don't want to. And my strategy of just building tanks, copters, and infantry is really what won me this match. Because those bread and butter units were able to wipe him out. Now here, I'm pulling back my copters so that even if he gets side slip, he won't be able to reach my copters. That's the reason why I did this. And uh, you might think that maybe I'm being too passive with these copters, but the thing is, nothing can reach this property anytime soon. And these infantry are, it's gonna take them so long to get up there. The only thing I need to do is just wait for him to waste his side slip and then wait for this tank to get its health back up and I will be able to secure this corner easily. With just the forces that with just the forces I have up here, I can easily secure this corner. And you're gonna see that happen over the course of the match. The next thing I do is <clears throat> I, this copter over here is very strange. You're gonna see it's not gonna do very much for the rest of the match, but I'm constantly threatening to go over here and attack his base, and it's forcing him to keep this anti-air over here for like the entire rest of the match. He has to keep this he, we're like basically playing footsies with this anti-air and this battle copter for the rest of the match. And uh, I mean, that's 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 an 800,000, uh, sorry, that's an 8,000 value unit that I'm keeping locked down and just keeping it in this one position for the entire match. Whereas it could be up here dealing with these two battle copters. So I come in, I can quickly wipe out this unit because of the anti-air that I built. And then I decide to come over here and I'm, because my it's going to take my artillery a while to front shift, so instead what I decide to do is I'm going to start front shifting with my tanks, but I'm actually going to keep my artillery over here to help guard this property. Because it's going to take it too long to get over to the right hand side anyway. And this recon is now getting back into the fight. This recon I built at the start of the match, and it's still contributing to the fight. It's still contributing. Even these weakened tanks, like I'm still using this for something. You're going to see me getting as much value as possible out of these weakened units as I can. And uh, I, I actually forgot to mention this. Sonya's HP on her units is actually not visible. So he doesn't... I mean, he probably knows that I have wounded tanks in here. But he doesn't remember which tanks are wounded or which tanks are at full health. So this 3 health tank and this 2 health tank... I mean, 
From his point of view, they look the same as this full health tank, unless he's been paying very close attention on which unit is which. This is this effect is much more powerful than Fog, but against uh, lower uh, tier players, it can still be good in Standard, because they tend to not pay as much attention to, to the details. Now finally, I decide, you know what, I'm gonna, because I'm front shifting to the right anyway, I'm gonna break my tank chain. Finally, I'm gonna break my tank chain, and I'm gonna build my tank over here. I'm gonna build, build an infantry here. And I'm going to build this transport copter because I want to get this infantry over here as soon as possible. I need to secure this other corner. I've been letting those properties sit there for way too long. So he fires on an infantry with his rocket. This rocket has now generated 900 gold worth of value. And it's still not in position to do anything useful. It's been sitting there doing nothing for so long. I cannot believe how useless that rocket ended up being. Now this art and I mean look this artillery is actually doing more work than the, than the than the rocket is, and it's it's half the value. I like I th I don't actually mind this artillery build. I did the same thing. I have an artillery on my side helping me keep things locked down. But the rocket's not. It's just not helping. It's really not. And these mechs are still not doing anything. He could have just built infantry instead of mechs. I think one of these mechs gets one good shot before the end of the match, and that's it. And you're seeing the difference difference in our strategy over here. Because he's got his battlecopters in the center, and I've got my my battlecopters over here, it's leading to it's leading to a very different uh, distribution of, of forces. It looks like his forces in the center are stronger, but you're going to be surprised at how easy it is for me to hold the center, even though I don't have any copters, and uh, he's got that rocket over there to help zone me out. Now this time, once again, I'm actually pulling my rockets. I'm sorry, I'm pulling my battle, uh, my battle copters way back, and I am absolutely doing going to keep them out of the range of this of these anti-air no matter what. And this may seem stupid, but I've, I've already forced him to build three anti-air, and at this point, I have way more tanks than he does. I had uh, I had nine tanks at this point, and he only had seven. Sorry, it's not yet, but there's gonna be it's gonna in a few turns. There's at one point where I have like eleven tanks, and he still only has like seven or eight tanks. And the reason is because I've been forcing him to build all these anti-air, and they're not doing anything. They're just chasing around my battle copters that they can't even catch up to. This is why unit count is so important. I've already built up a twenty-eight to twenty-four unit count advantage, and even if these battle copters aren't killing anything, the fact that I have them and they're helping to kind of they're putting pressure on my opponent and forcing him to do things that he wouldn't otherwise do. If, if I didn't have these copters, then he wouldn't need to have these anti-air, and he could have more tanks in the center. Is kind of the point that I'm getting to. It's 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 a domino effect. So unfortunately, I can't one-shot this infantry on a city, but I'm already putting so much pressure on this corner. Look how fast I was able to put pressure on this corner. He's got this slow rocket. He could never get over here and build up his defenses in time. So it was so easy for me to front switch over here. And I've just got this, this unit of just this way all of these infantry that i've been saving up because i've been focusing on unit count <clears throat> i've been saving up all the infantry and they're just pouring over here like there's just a wave of infantry coming in to capture all of these properties and my opponent's response is hilarious you're going to love this you're absolutely going to love this i loved it when i saw it i thought it was amazing so i'm pulling back here and i don't need to put anything on the city all i need to do look at this this 6,000 gold unit is countering this 12,000 gold unit all I have to do is put this here. If he tries to capture it, I can shoot on it. There's nothing he can do. The rocket cannot hit my artillery. And uh, if he wants if he wants to use his side slip and get in here and attack my artillery, guess what? I'm going to have tank support right away because he's coming into my base to fight. I pull my anti-air back. I start consolidating my forces here. There's nothing. I don't need to, I don't need to go into the center to fight. All I need to do is just use this artillery to lock down here, and I can hold the center for days to come. I go double tank again because I want to have this bigger tank presence in the center. This is the point now where I noticed I had 11 tanks and uh, he only had 7 tanks. He's going to try to capture this city. I think I interrupt this. He's threatening to capture that again, but once again, I mean this this 6,000 gold unit is already locking this down. This artillery has already paid for itself. So here's the battleship. I don't know what to think about this move. It was very funny. It was kind of effective but not really i don't know we're gonna see how this plays out in the match but i just thought this was amazing i'm already ahead of him on unit count and he decided to build a battleship i guess his rationale is that i didn't have any way to damage this battleship and uh <clears throat> if he built this i wouldn't be able to capture his port 
but these cities are still up for grabs and he has nothing to defend them and so my response my strategy when i saw the battleship i thought you know what i need to do i have eight or nine units here and all he has is one battleship i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep pushing he can only fire on one of these units per turn he can only this battleship can only fire once per turn so all i have to do is just keep pushing and i'm still gonna get all these properties and i'm still gonna be able to airport lock him too the battleship pretty much ends up doing nothing it really ends up doing nothing he's gonna commit to trying to capture this property and now he's moving the rocket in one two three four five it's finally in position to counter my artillery there is one other thing I want to talk about. I'm going to wait till the start of my next turn to talk about it. He's slowly moving in. He's forming a, this death ball in the center, but I'm holding the death ball. I have less units in the center, and I'm still holding the death ball back. Meanwhile, I've got more units on the right. I'm pushing into the right, and I'm also taking over this left flank here too. With this, all I've got is this small token force in the in the left corner, and I'm still holding it down. All I've got is this token force in the center. I'm still holding it down. I'm front shifting my tanks back into the center. And then over here on the right hand side, I'm just overwhelming him. Okay, so you, I want you to notice that I've had my counter break for a while and I haven't used it yet. So with Sonia, <laughs> her day to day sucks. It's, it's a negative. She has a negative day to day. Her normal power basically does nothing in standard. It's barely usable in fog. It does nothing in standard. And her superpower. Her superpower is the best thing about Sonia and it's still not very good. Counter break, you can't just pop it whenever you want. You have to wait and pop your counter break at the right time. And you may be thinking, well, if I save it for too long, then I'm not building up charge and I have to wait longer to get my next power. Yeah, but your normal power sucks and your superpower sucks. So it really doesn't matter. It's You're not in any rush to get your power a second time. Just hold on to it and just use it when it's going to have a big impact. So I'm not going to use that counter break until I'm absolutely ready to use it, until I know that it's going to put me in a, into a good position. So I've already flipped this property, now I'm going to start flipping these properties. I'm moving to the center. I actually moved my tank over here to wipe out this infantry. And uh, now I decided I can, I'm going to push into the center. Because because the rocket is now locking down my, um, my artillery, now I decided I have all these tanks. This is the moment to start pushing back and hit him in the center because he's overextended with his forces and he put his rocket and his artillery too far forward. This can, the, the point of this counter break is that I can move in and attack him and then next turn my units are going to be relatively safe because it's going to be harder for him to get a first strike. So I'm going to stop him from getting this cap, I'm going to stop him from getting that cap, and I'm going to start getting that cap. So now I've built up my unit advantage and I'm going to start focusing on economy again. So for the third phase of the match, I have secured a unit advantage and I'm going to start focusing on building my economy. I want to regain the income advantage that I had at the start. So I'm pushing in here, I'm just going to do as much damage as possible, and I'm fully aware that I'm leaving myself exposed to his rocket, and even his weakened artillery, but the thing is that I have more units than he does at this point, and I have counter break up right now, so it's going to be very it's going to be very hard for him to fight into this. He basically gets two free shots with his indirect units, but any direct engagements that he wants to take, he's taking at a disadvantage. So even though this position of mine seems very strange, it's <clears throat> counter break allows you to be very strangely aggressive in situations where you'd usually where you'd usually be out of position. It's tough to explain, but you'll see on the next turn when he counters. Now, honestly, if I was against a better player, they might have been able to punish me more harshly, but this this move ended up working out for me. And the reason I put the tank over here to kill this infantry was because I wanted to get this anti-air over here to lock down his airport as soon as possible. And this is the crux of my anti-battleship strategy. Yes, the battleship can do a lot of damage on whatever it fires on. However, I've given the battleship five targets that it needs to think about. It has to hit this tank if it wants to stop this tank from attacking it. It has to hit one of these two infantry to stop them capturing. It has to hit this anti-air to stop it from airport locking him. It has to stop this tank to stop this tank from protecting this infantry. Or to stop this tank from protecting this anti-air. There's five targets that he wants to shoot at right now. And he can only shoot at one of them. There's like, I'm just overwhelming him with too many options. The battleship can't do everything that it wants to do. So he decides to fire on my forward tank. And this is going to make it so that anything coming from this base is going to have an easier time. Uh, hitting this anti-air and uh, reinforcing over here in the corner. I think this was the correct move. I think this was the right unit to fire on, probably. Next thing he does, 
he uses his rocket and his um, artillery to uh, wipe out one tank. I'm not sure if he should have done that. Anyway, this is the turn where he uses side slip once again. I think this was a pretty bad side slip because all of our forces are already in the center together. So the extra movement is not really getting him anything. He's already we're already right there. We're already face to face, and side side slip doesn't really give him a big a big advantage here. So this mech goes up in the mountains. Side slip didn't help there. Counter break actually didn't help me very much there, but I mean it was a three health tank, so a mech would have wiped that out anyway. I think that was the one good shot that his mech ever gets. Here, he made a very big blunder. So this happens occasionally from time to time when I'm playing uh, opponents on in fog and even in standard. Nobody plays Sonya. I'm the only person on the ladder who plays Sonya. Let me explain to you how counter break works in case you don't know. When his units attack my units, my units actually attack him first and then his units attack. So even though it's his turn, my units actually get first strike. There's a lot of players who don't realize this and they usually throw unit, at least one unit into me before they figure out what's going on. Some players, Shelter kit, Sheltered Kid is about to do this. There are some players who actually attack multiple times into my units and it seems like they don't realize what's happening, especially because they can't see the HP value of my units. I think he didn't realize that what was happening. So this mech here tries to attack my tank. My tank just annihilates it and his mech barely does any damage, even with his 10% bonus from his power. From here, he tries to hit my weakened tank. I am able to hit him, damage, damage his tank first and survive as a result. His battlecopter tries to hit me. I manage to get chip damage on the battlecopter. He goes over here. He's trying to strike this tank. I get the first strike anyway. This was a great counter break right here. He tries to, he think he assumes that this is a weakened tank that he's going to finish off. It's not this tank because it struck first. It didn't take very much damage. It's able to chip down this tank. Now this comes over here. Now he is able to weaken my infantry, but once again, that would have happened power or no power. I mean, this anti-air is relegated to just wiping off, uh, to just finishing off a weakened infantry. He can't do anything about my copters. He's just like, the only thing he did, he damaged a couple of my tanks. He destroyed one tank, he damaged a couple of tanks, and that was it. So even though I would, I, I, I put myself in a really bad position in, in, in range of his rocket and his artillery, counter break really prevented him from, from punishing me, especially because he was unfamiliar with how to play around it. So if you ever play, if, if for some strange reason, if you ever encounter someone who picks Sonya, it's probably never going to happen to you ever. Just make sure you uh, play around the counter break correctly because it can be really devastating if you fail to do so. But I do want to talk about, even if my opponent understood how counter break worked and he played around it, it, it still would have prevented him from, from punishing me too hard because he would have been forced to stall in the center for one turn, and then next turn I could have just used that turn to reposition my forces before he could punish me. So that's really the value of counter break. If they don't play around it, you can absolutely devastate them. If they do play around it, you basically end up buying yourself one turn where you have a really solid defensive position no matter how bad you play. Although maybe that's overstating it a little bit. Anyway, uh, this Battlecopter right here, because he's He's already, he seems like he's hes still chasing this Battlecopter down in the corner that I was talking about earlier. And as a result, uh, my other Battlecopter is able to come over here and just help lock down this area. Like I said, this one Battlecopter, tank, and infantry have been able to hold this corner all on their own. And this Battlecopter here, because I have the unit count advantage, is forcing him, is baiting this uh, anti-air and forcing him to make moves that are splitting up his forces in a way that's not helpful. My uh, infantry finishes off this one, and my recon finishes off this one. Uh, goodbye to that mech. Next, I'm going to get a first strike here, and then I'm going to move in here. Um, I figured if I was going to have to move this tank anyway, I might as well just do some damage here. And because I wanted to I wanted to come in and get a clean shot with my anti-air against this copter, and now his rocket is completely exposed. Extreme. You never ever want to block a rocket with a copter. That was a huge blunder. I The battleship was 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 probably a blunder, but I would say actually his third, the third major blunder was trying to use a copter to protect his uh, rocket. That allowed me to wall break him, and that was basically the end of the match. I think at this point I've I've basically already won the match. Uh, it's just he, he's not gonna he's not gonna re resign for a little while, but at this point I I had pretty much already won the match, in my opinion. And now I'm able to get my uh, artillery right back into the position where it was before, consolidate my forces in the center, and now my my now not only not only did this operation in the corner work out, 
not only has this operation worked out, but now I've already taken control of the center. So I'm winning on every single front. I have better unit. I have 30 units to 19 units. I have more unit value. I have more income, and I have better positioning. And now I'm just sitting on top of his airport. Meanwhile, all of these infantry are coming in. Even if he wants to fire on these infantry, I can still get it. There's just another one waiting to replace it just to come in and take this property. Continuing tank, copter, infantry up here. My build order, tank, copter, infantry. I'm going to protect my unit count lead. This one I'm going to pull over here. That uh, I know that he doesn't have a side slip this turn because he just used it. Although I didn't realize that he actually could have got it again right away. Let me count if this could have ever reached. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it actually couldn't have reached anyway. I must have counted correctly. I put this back here so that he couldn't reach me. So this anti-air still can't reach me, but it's also still not really doing anything in the center or to help with these battle copters up here. So now he has to divert forces over here into the corner to try and deal with these. And I guess I was wrong. I guess this is where he resigned. <laughs> so he must have realized that the match was pretty much over. He was like, the battleship's not doing anything. I have to pull units over here into the corner to get rid of these infantry. There's copters over here that I have no response to. Uh, my opponent has already taken control of the center. They're winning by every metric. The match was over, and Sheltered Kid realized at that point that it was time to resign. Um, I don't have much else to say about this match. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that I was able to win my first match in Standard, even, even while playing Sonya. And uh, let me know if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future. Um, if you want to see more Advanced Wars videos, uh, leave a comment. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Um, if you subscribe, uh, it lets me know that you'd like to see more Advanced Wars videos in the future. And uh, if you want to see more Sonya videos, let me, let me know too, because I'd love to play more as Sonya.